Jeff Hopper, Jeff Cramper, talking about our identity in Christ mm. as those who believe in Jesus. Uh, who am I? We're asking that question, and we're trying to answer it as best we can. I want to start today by talking to Jeff about evangelistic golfers. Mm. Sounds weird. Yeah, but it doesn't sound weird when you realize that you there are times when you get cornered at the party by the guy who won't talk about anything but golf. That's right. That's right. Oh, on he goes and on he goes. <laughs> and why does he do this? And it's not just guys. Some of the ladies do the same thing. They want to get their friends in the game. And, you know, if you are a person who says mm. golf is about friends, I want to get my friends in the game. Yeah. And so they're out there talking about golf and talking about golf. It can be a little bit wearisome, yeah. but it can also be effective. Very much so. Very much so. You know, I... I th- I think, by the way, it brings to mind a story that you told me once. Uh, it's such a weird thing, this idea of ministry and golf together, that Jeff got a call at our offices one day, and she had the wrong number, and she <laughs> asked, well, what is this? And Jeff tried to explain that we have a golf ministry, and her response is, well, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard, and just hung up the phone. That's right. <laughs> so I know it's odd to imagine pairing golf and evangelism, but it is the very core of what we do. Uh, I have a, a guy that I was privileged to meet. Uh, some of you may know him. If you, any of you drink a particular kind of beer, that dark beer that they make in Ireland, do you remember what that beer is? Oh, yes. The Guinness. It's Guinness. <laughs> and Oz Guinness is, re- is a kind of a, a real great uh, commentator on, on all kinds of things, but especially a Christian apologist. And he wrote a book called The Call. And the call's essence was whatever it is that you find yourself in, unless you have a very specific call to go into you know, full-time ministry, stay in that area. We need you in your area to become what? A, someone who can transfer the truth of the unseen realm, Jesus' kingdom that he inaugurated through his death on the cross, to various niches, various areas of society. Don't everybody run and go to the official capacity as minister ministry stay where you are we need you where you are and i think essentially what he was saying and a great book called the call if you ever have a reason to get it please do but we need you as evangelist wherever you find yourself now for us it happens to be the golf world yeah it does happen to be the golf world this idea of evangelism uh, sometimes i think we think of it as wow that's what the really spiritual people do right and uh, they're the ones who are out there they've got all their words lined up so they can say it right and they can convince people that this is who Jesus is and why they need to believe. But I find that some of the most eager evangelists are those who are quite new in the faith. They have such a recent experience of transformation in Christ that they can't help but tell people about it. Isn't that right? And they're not oftentimes really able to articulate theologically what's happened to them other than to say, I don't know what happened. All I know is that I was blind and now I see. That's right. And uh, it is a powerful time in life, but not a place where we should just sit and be comfortable. We always want to take that next step. Now, I think, Jeff, it would behoove us to say there is a distinction to be made between evangelist as a gifting part of the fivefold sure. ministry or first corinthians 12 romans 12 both outline the gifts of the spirit and we all have different gifts sometimes i think people i'm not able to articulate this i don't i get confused i can't really get my words out i'm not good in front of people speaking or whatever well you can still have an evangelist heart and there's a guy named dixon out of australia that writes a book on missions and he he impacted me by saying there is the promotion of the gospel, and then there is the proclamation of the gospel. Mm-hmm. I, I happen to be a guy that from day one, I want to tell everybody about Jesus, and then I want to learn, learn more so I could articulate it. And I think it was a gift that God gave me to proclaim. But I have been partnered with promoters of the gospel who promote it may, maybe just by good deeds, for instance. They go out and serve a community, and through that, people come to know Christ, or through giving, or whatever it is. But we're all on the same team through the promotion of the gospel, even though I may not have the particular gifting to articulate it. We're all called to share our faith in some ways and give our testimony. But I think there's a distinction to be made. And you can do that at your own club. Pair up with somebody. God will lead you to somebody who's able to articulate it. You might be the guy who just says, hey, let's get a group together. You're the catalyst. You're Maybe you do the 
uh, you do the uh, online stuff or get everybody on an email or get everybody organized or get set up the chairs or whatever before, you're every bit as much taking part of this evangelistic movement. You may be a promoter more than an actual proclaimer, but it's all evangelism. It is, and it's also the case that some of you, if you've been around links for a, a while, uh, recognize an echo here of the S, that last of the five yes. T's. That S is to share Christ, and the scripture that we adopt there is 2 Corinthians 5.17, which talks about being an ambassador, an ambassador of Christ. So that idea of evangelism mm -hmm. and ambassadorship, those are the same things, that we are out there representing Christ, and that's part of our identity. And by the way, one last thing. As, as a, let's reframe this. Rather than just an ought to, and it is an ought to, but rather than just an ought to, this is the most exciting way to do life mm -hmm. because you get paired with people you love, you're on mission together, and it is the most invigorating. And to see somebody come to Christ and you played a role in it, even if a peripheral role, I'm telling you, I lost my taste for everything else. Yeah. Relative to that, Jesus again, his words strike true. It brings life. Yeah. Well, an ought to doesn't work so well, but when we're given a story, we want to tell that story. Absolutely. And we've been given a story of change in our lives because of Jesus. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you next time.